The vision received was that of blood cells traveling throughout the body supplying the much needed oxygen and other nutrients to the differing members of the body to fulfill their purpose. Once the blood cells are spent, they must return back to the heart to be refilled before being sent out again and fulfill their purpose. That, uh, you know, the decision for homeschooling was hard because of the lack of income, but at the same time, we saw God's faithfulness because God provided supplemental incomes through things that you were doing. I remember if you, <laughs> if you listen to the last uh, podcast of testimonies that we have about the family, you would know that my wife, um, because she was, I guess, being stubborn and wrestling with the Lord, uh, the Lord kind of broke her arm. <laughs> and because she broke her arm, she wasn't able to go out and, and get a job and stuff. Um, but she incurred a huge debt. You remember? Yes, sir. Yeah, a huge debt. And when we got married, we had to kind of deal with making the payments for those debt. So one of the things that God did was, uh, you know, he, he put it on my heart. And, and, and my, my heart was to tell my wife, uh, I think you need to write a letter. I think you need to write a letter to the doctor. I think you need to write a letter to the hospital. I think you need to write a letter to the debt people. And so she did it. She wrote a letter to them. It was over $30,000 that we were owing. And we were having to pay this little, <laughs> you know, chunk of change. But it was like it was going to be forever. But he provided because the first letter got ignored. And then the second letter, I, I told her, I just told you, just write it again. And write it to all of them. I think you only wrote it to one person or one people the first time. And then the next time I said, no, write it to all of them. Just send it to every single one of them. So and it, we ended up getting a response and the response was they forgave the debt. Mm -hmm. So then we didn't have that expense anymore. And that was just that was that was just a huge testimony that that you know God wrote off a debt that you know we obviously were obligated to pay but you know he he he, he sought fit to, to uh forgive us of that and to put it on their hearts to forgive us of that. So even though our our finances were strapped he gave us relief in so many different ways through supplemental incomes through forgiveness of debt but the longer we lived in in miami everything just got harder yeah um you the know cost of living was the cost higher. of living was rising uh we didn't have a yard i mean we we had a community pool but you know it, it was just hard um uh, financially um we couldn't have put our kids on the on the on the on the insurance they had to be on the state insurance and then there was a whole spiel with that and, and going through that every time uh, we needed to do something. Um, insurance, I think I think insurance just to cover me and you was like $700 a month and that was 20 some odd years ago. Who knows how much it is now, but I mean, it was just skyrocketing. So we ended up, one of the reasons why we ended up uh, leaving was just, it was just getting too costly. Um, but that's when we moved in 2006 to Georgia. Um, so, but before we get to, to Georgia, um, let's kind of maybe, uh, focus in on, um, as parents raising three children, I think we learned quickly early on that it wasn't going to be the same. They were different. Yes. How, how, how did we ended up? dealing with that or struggling through that because i i think some parents may have their first child and they oh every child is going to be like this and then you quick to find out oh my gosh no you know what were the differences in our in our children that just became you know a struggle that we just had to learn along the way i mean each of them uniquely we we have challenges with um our oldest was very bubbly very she was pretty she was very obedient um, her dad taught her once, I don't know, she got in trouble for something and he was like, when you hear me call your name, you better jump and go or respond immediately. Oh. <laughs> and that like, that recorded in her little brain, like she, that was never an issue. But my son, he was independent. He was, um, he was touchy, feely, hands-on exploring. If I told him not to get near a tree, he got near the tree. I know one time he, there was a ants and he, leaned on the tree and I had told him several times not to and he ended up getting all bit up um he was the he was the kid that I could never sit down with our that park friends that we had it was a standing joke literally I just made a pun 
Um, I had to stand <laughs> during the whole time we met because if I sat down, my son would disappear in a heartbeat. And so it was inevitable that I'd be looking for him uh, several times. Um, we went, I know one time we went to a mall in the middle of the day to do something and I stepped in, we were leaving the play area and I stepped in and I had the two girls, one on each hand and he was walking and all of a sudden I stepped in to look at some chocolate. I was going to buy some chocolate for him. <gasps> and all of a That's sudden, what it was. The chocolate. one second he was gone and I freaked out. I remember I texted my husband he was at work. Um, I did yeah, not like, know I'm what to do. do. Um, I because I actually I saw the security officer and he's like, oh yeah, we saw a little kid and he leads me all the way to the other side of the mall and the little kid that they saw was not my little kid. So now I'm really flipping because I'm just thinking, oh my god, we were near the bathrooms, you know, all kinds of things were just ringing out. And long story short, that child was um, had gone back to the play area and told the officer that his mother and sisters were missing <laughs> so they were you know um they radioed oh, this yeah. guy and we 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 reunited but that i say that laughing now that was not i was very very frantic i was frantic yeah um there there were um so his temperament was wherever we went i had to find a way to contain him like if we were in a church i remember we were meeting in a place it was an office building or something and i had to put him he was younger but i had to put him in a playpen so he couldn't get out and then what he would do is start throwing everything out from the playpen um because he because if he was out he would start getting into all the cords and the electronics and touching everything he did that even when he was in his room we were living in the townhouse he was in his crib he would crawl Lydia up never on the, did that. he would crawl up on he the shelf he would crawl up on top of the shelf and then he'd be on top of the shelf and we yeah. didn't have that video was, cameras I, back then. We times, just had the yeah. sound thing to hear the A couple of times I sounds. walked in on him and he was on the very top shelf near yeah. the ceiling. And I was like, oh my goodness. So, um, and then our youngest, she, because she had stomach issues, she was one that we could not put down. So we literally had to carry her through her naps. And, For 13 yeah, months. And she was very, oh um, she wasn't one who, road trips were not, we uh, didn't do very many vacations while she was little because. Do you remember the song we used to sing? The kids would, yeah. The what kids was the song? Would, Don't cry, Deborah. How does it go? No, I'm not going to sing it. Don't cry, Deborah. Don't cry, Deborah. Yeah, Debra, so the kids were the kids were. Don't cry, Debra, That was their coping of cry, this child cry, that would scream cry. all the way if we oh, went to Orlando from Miami to Orlando. So that was that was a, I remember. Uh, crying and praying over her we asked people to pray for her um if she was you at, even went to a class to massage I her went intestines to a, i did i went to a class to, to sure learn how to massage to relax her body um i did every mother's milk drops everything that every herbal anything that you i could got off dairy of. i got off dairy i you got lost off weight like all that. kinds of stuff i did a lot of things that just sort of trying to figure out how to get her through that and how to get me through that um, how to get the family, the kids, I, I know kids are resilient because they, they, we, we taught them that song and that's what they would do when she would start screaming. Um, so we got through all of that. I mean, we had our, it wasn't like all the time, you know, during the day when we were doing school, she was fine. It was just whenever she ate, um, whenever we traveled, it was, it was, it was hard. So, so the temper winds were very different. Yes. Our oldest was, like you said, she was bubbly. She was vivacious. She would sing through the aisles of Publix. And uh, and she would sing it out loud. And she wouldn't need a microphone or megaphone. Uh, our son was hands-on with everything. Just everything. He had to get his hands on it because that's the way he learned. I realized later that's the way he learns. He he learns by you know grabbing on hold of things. And then our, th our third was, was clingy. Just very not, uh, had to warm up to people. And it took like sometimes a couple days, a couple weeks to warm up to people. But she was just on our, our chest, on our breast. We were holding her, carrying her everywhere. Um, and I think that was our first glimpse that, okay, it's not going to be the same with all of them. Mm -hmm. They're going to be different. And that really panned itself out as they grew older. And I think as parents... Um, I think we learned um, 
that we needed to parent them just slightly differently because they were different people. Right. They responded to different ways of speaking, of, of, of interacting than others. Um, so that was a learning curve for us uh, growing up. But you, I, I, you know, you brought up that. That was a funny story. I, I didn't remember that about the mall. But I do remember how it happened again in Georgia, like a yes. decade later in at Georgia, the Georgia at the Georgia Aquarium. Yes. How did that go? What what happened there? Um, because I got a call there too. My I brother uh, came into town with his wife and his kids. Um, I don't remember what he was doing, but my sister in law and I went to the Georgia Aquarium. She had um, her two daughters. Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to remember who was on this. Um, so. Her oldest daughter was Lydia's age, and then her youngest daughter was Deborah's age, about. Maybe they were six months apart. Six, She was six months younger So it was Deborah. you, your sister-in-law, and five kids. And Three five, of them ours, two of them hers. Right. Okay. So we went to Georgia Aquarium. That was the first time we, I had ever, all of us had ever been there. Um, and so I was videotaping and taking pictures of everyone, so... I kind of, I, I think I was not really getting to enjoy Georgia Aquarium as much as sort of watching the kids, videotaping, and taking pictures. But there was this one moment that I wanted to see the, um, the what are those fish in the Amazon? Seahorses? No, no, in the Amazon. In the, the Amazon. Piranhas. Oh, piranhas. I was looking at the piranhas as a guy was saying, like, if you get close, you'll see them watching you, whatever. And I stepped in and I looked at my sister-in-law and she had her eyes on, seemingly we had our eyes on all the kids. And when I stepped out and I looked at her, she signaled me that, like, she didn't know where the, my, the two younger girls, my daughter, her daughter, and our son were. The other, the, uh, Lydia and, and her cousin had gone to see something, so we quickly found them. But we went to the lost and found, you know, the lost and found, or the, and they were, like, very, being very casual. Oh, they're probably in the play area. And I'm like, they're little. This is a big place. This is like a mall. What do you mean? You, they, are y'all going to shut up the doors? You know, and just, they were being very, very <laughs> You wanted them to nonchalant. close down the whole aquarium. <laughs> well, they were being very nonchalant about it. And here we have, and my sister-in-law was panicking, and I know she was. And I was trying not to look panic, and I'm sitting there trying to text my husband, like, please pray. I cannot, we can't find the kids. I don't know what's going to happen. And in the meantime, my phone was ringing, and I picked it up, and these people were like, are you Carmen Ruiz? And I was, like, thinking, why are they caught? It, it was like it was some sort of, um, you know, commercial, you know, people trying to sell me something. So I'm like, I don't have time for this, and I hung up on them. Well, later on, you know, found out, they called again. It, they were the people that had our children. Um, the, the, my son had thought that we said we were going to go watch a movie on the second floor. And so his, his, um, sister and cousin were crying and he was comforting them and they went up there and we weren't there. And so when I got up there, I was about to rip into my son and the lady was like, lady, please be nice to him. He was comforting your daughter and the, he was comforting the two little girls, um, reassuring them that everything was going to be fine. So that was a moment of extreme panic. Um, and, um, I mean, my son, I guess, you know, it was good that he, he knew my number. He knew my name. He gave the information. He was very calm and he went up there, but he I passed was, the test. I was upset with him because he had led them up there <laughs> instead of trying to find us when they couldn't find us. So anyway, but um, looking back on it, I mean, he was the kid that 10 years before, you know, got lost in a mall, and what did he do? He told the the security, "Yeah, yeah his mom I, was lost. lost. Yeah. yeah, and yet, ten years later, he's now older. Same thing happens, but he's the one that's taking care of his sister. He's taking care of his cousin. He's got his head on his shoulder. He's fearless. He's <laughs> he's taking care of you know what needs to be taken care of, and he's not afraid. Right. You know, so that that was you know tremendous uh, test. So. You know, we those are some of the stories that you have, and obviously, you know, everybody's going to have their own stories and they're going to cherish them. Um, but we did move to Georgia, and one of the things that really, um, I guess, were very much impressed upon us when we moved to Georgia was, okay, we do have to educate them, but we cannot neglect laying the foundation of the scriptures in them. Mm -hmm. And so that became a thrust, a huge emphasis that we, it's not that we didn't do it in, 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 in Florida. 
However, considering how young they were in Florida, it would be hard to kind of well, we were, you know, we were actually lay the foundation. Doing you did the Bible fun, studies. No, we both did. We yeah. were doing fun devotional family yeah, yeah, yeah. Bible studies. But, but the, you can only, you know, cement the foundation in them to such an extent because they're such they're so young. But when we moved up to Georgia and then the the the, the, the not preceding but the following years, um that that was definitely emphasize in our house mm -hmm. um just getting into the word getting into the scriptures not merely you know um you know knowing your way around the scriptures and knowing what the 66 books of the bible are um but helping them you know try to piece together th this this whole uh biblical record of god's dealings with man and what god expects of man and i think uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, that we ran into a particular book by Ted Tripp called Shepherding, Shepherding a, Child's a Child's Heart. I don't uh, know if that was in Florida or in Georgia. A, that was actually in Florida because that book was recommended to us by my cousin. Uh -huh. We had met with him when our kids were little in Dominican Republic, and I was very impressed with how well his, his mm -hmm. I think they were middle, middle age, middle school age, at the time, how well they, how well mannered well they were, manners. and I just, and he's a, a minister in in a, in a Dominican Republic. Yeah, in Dominican mm -hmm. Republic, and I asked him, and he recommended that book, and we read it, and we um, we took it to heart, and I think we were imparting it on people in Miami, uh, with the Bible study people, because they were starting with their children, and we had our way of sharing a lot of the principles from there. So, but we revisited it in Georgia as we were sharing it with families up here. But what we also ran into that was a blessing. And again, I I always think, I could say that I have these bright ideas, but honestly, the Lord just, he just takes us down roads where things just, he just drops blessings. And this particular um, incident that I remember is we um, decided to put Lydia and John Daniel, I think in a Bible bee contest. And mm -hmm. when we did that, they provided material to the kids had to learn how to memorize scriptures, but they also provided material to study the books of the Bible. And I remember we were doing Kings and we were doing some other study. I was doing this with them at home. And that became like even a blessing to me as I was going through that with the children during the day. Um, and then, you know, I just to add on, I think what was really great for that, because you I think you became a master at your craft and I and I mean in regards to education because of what you went through with the kids in homeschooling I think you bring that into your classroom now as a as a foreign language teacher um, you did a lot of stuff with science you did a lot of stuff with history where the kids would dress up and and really get into, into yeah the the history of right, what was right. going on the Native Americans or the or the what was the other theme that it was a major theme. I think it was the, was the, it the feudal, Vikings or the, the feudal the, wars. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the kids really, really got into that. But when we moved up to Georgia, we did that with the Bible. Yeah. We really, it, you, you, more, 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 more you, uh, I, I, I was probably a supplemental at the time, but more, you really involve them in, in the stories. And so when we read stories, it wasn't like we were just reading it to get it done. We read it with inflection. We read it and we got up and we might act out something or have the kids, you know, do something, you know, more physical body wise with it so that they would just really be immersed as they're immersed into everything else. And I think, um, that made the scriptures come alive in a way that normally kind of doesn't, you know, when, you know, it's different when you're just listening to somebody in a, in a pulpit, you know, give the story again, you know, but when you're at home and you get to dress up and you get to get involved into the things, I think uh, that really did something for them that maybe later on they'll realize how important that was mm -hmm. in, 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 you know, well, it, it was scriptural. It, it was a bless. I think I believe it was a blessing to us as a family. It bonded sure. us, and I mean, it was a blessing to me because any way I go through the Bible, I could say I know it, and then I just find. I always tell my husband, it's like a, a layer of onions. You're peeling the layers off, and there's more, there's more, there's more, and so that's that's how I felt during that time. I felt like it was a, um, although, it was a good thing, but then it was a bad thing because I was putting pressure on my daughter to. You know, 
practice her scriptures and memory verses and everything because she actually won the local competition in she Georgia, did, the state yeah, of Georgia. She won, won the she well in the region. She won. Oh, okay, the region. And um, John Daniel, I think, came in second. But anyway, her winning then opened the opportunity for us to go to Washington for her to compete. And um, Washington D.C. Yeah, and and then the the Lord blessed us in so many ways with that because that was a we were gonna have to pay for all that and then we people just blessed us. I wrote I wrote letters. It's one of the only times that I've done something yeah. like that. And that was the a response, very humbling experience. To be the response with you. was very it was very humbling. There was a um, our um, basically we asked the saints, we asked friends, we asked family because it, it was all five of us that were going to go. <laughs> it wasn't going to be just Lydia, you know. It was the parents, and it was all three of us were going to go to Washington D.C., get in a hotel, got to travel there, got to travel back, and then spend was it a weekend? I mean, we got nights? to we we hit we got to. The kids got to go to Washington, D.C. That was my deal. Like, we're going to make something out of this. But the point was, it was going to be expensive. And on my one salary, it just, it it wasn't going to happen. But it was, uh, uh, and my daughter, we we put it before her. We actually told her, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. And we challenged her to pray about it. So that was one of the things that she prayed about because she really wanted to do it. But then after she got the blessings that we were going to go, it's like, I could not get that child to, to, to study to the degree that she probably needed to for the national competition. Um, so if I were going to change anything, that might be that. Um, but long story short, even a brother um, in Washington, like sponsored us from over there, you know, got us, made a collection in his church to give us money for parking. Cause we, we got the hotel, but then we were going to have to pay like this exorbitant amount of money to park the car. Um, and then I, uh, as we were leaving, um, he we were allowed to stay, and he opened up his place for us. I don't. He wasn't even there during that time, but it was all a the kid. All of these things that we're sharing um, to me were not just. It was part of the homeschooling experience, but it was also building the faith of our children because they they would watch us be in a situation where we couldn't. We probably wouldn't be able to do something, and then we would pray about it, and God would make a way for us. And not just them, but people that watched around us were seeing um, how God made ways for us with a lot of different things that we partook partook of with them. Um, the homeschool conferences that we went to that emphasized, uh, you know, family. Bodhi Bachman spoke at one. Is that the way? I, did I say his name right? I think it's Vodi. Bodhi Bachman. I said yeah. it. Yeah, Bodhi Bachman. <laughs> um, he he spoke, um, and it was a very good, very good family con you know, homeschool conference geared towards family. They watched us, you know, we worked with the selling our curriculum, getting you, we usually had to get used curriculum. I would get, we could get new stuff for certain things, but I didn't let the kids use the books. They had to write on some of them because they would, it would just, we would just recycle it. So then whatever Lydia used, John Dana would have it the following mm-hmm. year, etc. So just ways for that God made for us to learn to be, um, very wise with our finances to, to for it to work. And I continued um, working part-time, um, you know, as a tutor and finding the balance. I, th- I think one time I told my husband we were like a revolving door. As he was arriving, I was leaving. Um, sometimes there would be a gap of time. We later come to find out certain things took place during that gap of time. But <laughs> God was very good to us. And I... I am very thankful as I hear parents now and the their heart cry and the situations that they go through, um, you know, teachers at school that have children. I'm so thankful that we made that sacrifice and we were able to dedicate that period of time, let go of, you know, we didn't have the vacations and all the things that people do, but we had the time that, that you can't redeem that. You can't take that. You can't get that back. I um, mean, so when we life. say that, that we didn't have vacations, I mean, you and I didn't go on a vacation till our 20th anniversary. Yeah. Well, it's just us. Just us. Just too. us. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. We didn't have a vacation. But we had, we had, we had family But what we things. did was we had a lot of family traveling. Yeah. A lot of family. I mean, when we were in Florida, we went to Naples. 
and you know we kind of left Florida and we're in Georgia now but one of, one of the things that my wife said early on is that our youngest daughter would not get left behind on anything and I remember when we went to Naples we were swimming in the pool and I was having the kids jump in the pool to kind of practice their swimming so they'd dive in and they'd swim to the other side Lydia was the oldest, so obviously she knew more, and they had been the swimming lessons. And then John jumped in after her, swam to me, and swam to the other side. And while I'm helping John, my youngest daughter jumps in the pool <laughs> while I'm helping John, and I don't realize, and I turn around, and there she is, flail not flailing. She's actually trying to swim because she would not get left behind. And that has been her one of her trademarks. Uh, in our family is that even though Lydia was older, taller, you know, faster for some time, John older, taller, faster for some time, you know, on the bikes and running and playing and doing all of these things, our youngest just, she refused to be left behind on anything and would then excel. And it's one of the reasons why she excelled in her athletic prowess, if you will, is because she was doing things at an earlier age than her older siblings were. And so she ended up being, you know, with more physical uh, uh, skills uh, than them just because she was doing it earlier because she just refused to be left behind. If they were riding a bike, she couldn't ride a bike. I remember teaching her how to ride bike here in Georgia. You know, uh, she wouldn't get left behind. If they were out playing basketball, if they were out doing this, out doing that, she would go and do it. I mean, we had a, a, a tree climbing event. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Where they were in ropes and all of them were, it was part of a co-op thing. But they had so many um, memories mm -hmm. that were just just awesome that that, you know, we may not have been the richest family, materially speaking, but in experience. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, they had a really rich experience, not just in Florida with the co-op home group that we had there. But I remember you were traveling from Georgia to Tennessee. Uh, we went to Washington, D.C. another time. We visited the co-op friends that are in Carolinas, I think. Mm -hmm. And we, we did some stuff there. We got to go to Texas. You know, we got to do things that were, and we didn't fly and there. Dominican Republic. We, got we did get the Dominican Republic, and that was, you know, a blessing of your of your parents uh, to help us uh, do that. But for the most part, we stayed local. We just did things local, but it was just a very enriching environment. Um, so... You know, we, 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 we're in Georgia, we come to this point, um, and now the kids are growing older. Um, Thus is the ministry of our Father's heart through us. Our utmost desire is to be in the Father's heart, to know the Father's heart, and express the Father's heart to you. If you appreciate listening to this podcast and we're blessed, pass it along to someone else by text, email, or word of mouth in the hopes that they might be positively impacted as you were. If you are interested in supporting our efforts, we would ask you to consider the following. One, pray for us. Two, leave a positive rating or review with whomever you listen to our podcast with. And three, if you desire to contribute monetarily, you can do so at paypal.me slash jbenjesus or you can cash app dollar sign J Ben Jesus or you can Venmo at J Ben Jesus that's J B E N J E S U S God bless